Pastor Goodman with the Drive School Podcast, and uh, I don't have any friends again today, but I do have the strong desire to talk to you about God's omnipotence and why it matters. Uh, we are tackling uh, major theological concepts, how to talk about them, uh, and it's, it's important, this idea of God's omnipresence, um, that, that God is in all places, um, mostly because um, we almost always do this one wrong. Um, it, it's one of those places where like you can go from like the, the stereotype of like the burnt out hippie, like God is everywhere, man, to um, just sort of the recognition like sunsets are pretty, mountaintops are grand, looking out at the stars when you are away from city lights and you can actually see more than like three of them at one time is breathtaking and it is very, very easy to see the magnificence of this creation, that there is something not just beautiful here, but, but profound. Um, the problem, though, is if um, God is everywhere, uh, it's real hard to find him when you actually need him. Um, in fact, when the Lutheran Confessions, our Book of Concord, talk about this, uh, it actually says that it's not particularly helpful to talk about God's omnipresence. Um, it's true that there is nowhere that he cannot be, um, but we don't have a God who wants to reveal himself in all places. See, God's power, God's magnificence, the, the beauty and intellect behind our, our Lord who would form things like the stars and the mountains and the sunset. It, it's absolutely there, uh, but nowhere does it actually promise the forgiveness of sins. Nowhere does a mountaintop actually explain to you that, that the sun would die and rise again to forgive you uh, and, and save you, and that through the waters of baptism, he would seal you to be his own. But even more than that, how do you explain where God is in the tornado? in the fire, in, in all of the things that, that we cannot understand. Uh, because if God is there, I have no idea what he's doing. And quite frankly, I wish he'd do it better because I really don't like what he's doing right now. See, a, a God who is everywhere is really, really hard to explain unless you like everything. And that is why it's not super helpful to talk about the fact that God can be in all places. And in fact, the scriptures never actually talk about it this way. In fact, they would actually steer us away from talking about God as simply being everywhere. Uh, from the, the prophet Elijah who hides in the mountain and um, sees uh, that the Lord is revealed not in the fire or the earthquake or the great wind, but in the small whispering word. Uh, we, we see a God who would not be known simply by these grand acts of nature, but actually by a God who wants to speak. Uh, God can be everywhere, but the miracle here is that God locates himself. See, um, from the Christmas miracle where God became man, where the, the son was born of a Virgin Mary, uh, and angels came to sing about it, uh, to, to shepherds who were watching over their field by night, they actually responded to the locality of God, to that God is in a, a specific place. Uh, you see, it, it's not that they heard glory be to God on high, uh, but, but rather, here he is. Let us go and see. See, after hearing the angel chorus, uh, peace on earth, goodwill to men, they said, well, if God is everywhere, we should just stay right here. No, they, they went to, to see the miracle that happened. God locates himself. And this is actually how the Psalms speak about it too. So it's, uh, even the Psalm that would actually be quoted to, to sort of prove God's omnipotence, uh, it, it, we, we do it wrong. Uh, it, it says, where shall I go from your spirit or where, where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take on the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. You know, it's awesome. Not just that God can be anywhere, but that God would go anywhere for you. See, it's the for you part that matters. If God is with you, well then, wherever you happen to be, that's where God wants to be because he loves you. He wants to save you. He wants to care for you. And that means that God will even go with you, even ahead of you, through the tornado, through the fire, through the earthquake, through the disaster, through the calamity, through all of the things where I cannot explain him. But more, locating himself all the while. The other place where we sort of have a, a major proof text about God being in all places is, that, is, is at the very end of the Gospel of Matthew, where Jesus, right before he ascends, says, uh, Go into all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all of the things of which I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. Um, it's the word lo that, that, that says where he is. In those things, in the baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. In the doing of the things that I have just commanded you to do, like the Lord's Supper that was in the like chapter right before he talks about this, 
I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. See, God can be anywhere, and he will be anywhere for you, but so that you may actually find him. He locates himself. He, he is incarnate to walk amongst uh, the, the, the Middle East, to, to, draw, to, to ride on a donkey into Jerusalem, to die and to rise in a physical place where you can see it. And he locates himself in the word. He locates himself in the sacraments, which are water joined to the word, bread and wine joined to the word. Uh, and, and there, where the, the Holy Spirit works, you can find God. And being baptized, there is nowhere you can go that God can't go. There is nowhere that you can go that is sort of off limits to him. If you, the baptized, are in the midst of calamity and fire and earthquake and great wind, you're baptized. So God goes with you to shield you and to save you, not simply from the, the pains of this life, but from death itself. Because even if even if the things that you cannot understand get you, God says you're not allowed to stay dead, so you, you rise again, free from disaster on the last day in a new heaven and a new earth where nothing bad will ever happen to you. Lo, I am with you always, not just everywhere, but listen, set up a church wherever you happen to go because there's going to be some stuff that you're not going to like. This earth is broken by sin, and so there's going to be a lot of places where we have to see sin break stuff in this earth. There's going to be a lot of places where things are not working the way they're supposed to. And you can mark it as a sign of God's absence or a sign of God's evilness or as something else. But instead of any of that, because he is working good for sinners, even when sinners are breaking the earth, even when the earth itself has been broken by the sin of Adam and Eve, instead of trying to measure all of these things, he, he, he says, listen, I'm going to hide this side of my will for you because you won't understand the things that I'm going to do in the midst of the earthquake or the fire. So instead of, of wondering, I want you to know these things about me. And then he reveals who he is in his word. He reveals his will for you in his word. See, God has two wills. He has a, well, he has one will, but he has a hidden will and he has a revealed will. God's will is always to save. God's will is always to, to save you. But there are going to be parts of it he doesn't tell you about how he's doing it. And that's why God's omnipresence can be a dangerous thing because we always start to write into the situation God's will, even if he doesn't tell us what it is. So instead, we fall back on God's revealed will. He locates himself in word and in sacrament so that you can always know where to find him when things are falling apart. Because in the midst of any kind of natural disaster or awful thing, you can take a psalm with you. You can take a prayer with you that quotes the scriptures. You can, you can hear and your pastor can come and bring you the word of God, the sacrament. You go baptized wearing the armor of God even now so that you are never alone. And this is why it matters that God is omnipresent because, specifically because, there are places in this world where it is really, really hard to find the idea of a loving God. And so you need to know, even when you go into those places, not just the mountaintop, the, the sunset, the, the perfect experience at the lake, but, but in the midst of a war zone, in the midst of disaster, in the midst of all of those things, it's not that God is absent. It's that you can't find him there so that you need to know that he is with you. Look to your baptism, look to the word, look to the sacrament, and then you can know that you are not alone. You're not alone when everything's falling apart because God can be anywhere and is willing to be anywhere for you. This is how we talk about God's omnipresence. It's not good to talk about God's omnipresence if it's just sort of God is in all things. That's, that's animism, that's paganism, that's, that's usually false religion. If God is in the trees and God is in the sunset and God is in the mountains, the one place that you're never going to sort of come to the conclusion that God is, is on the cross. So instead, uh, the word is where we look for God. And the word promises us that in the word and the sacraments, anywhere you go, God will be with you as long as you carry those things with you, receive those things while you're there. So wherever you are, let there be a church there too. Wherever you are, uh, receive God's word and sacrament so that whatever you're experiencing, you can also receive his, his peace. That's how, we'll, that's how we'll talk about this. Thanks for tuning in to the Drive School Podcast, and uh, we'll do it again sometime.